Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Today's topic is going to be musculoskeletal and connective tissue disorders. One of the first things we want to talk about, which is high yield, is Herb Duchesne's palsy. Now, when a patient presents to you with their limb that hangs by their side and they have a medially rotated forearm that is pronated, okay, so the key words here are medial and pronation. If you see these characteristics in a patient where they have loss of biceps, paralysis of their lateral rotators, and paralysis of the AB ductors, then their limb is going to be basically by their side, their forearm is going to be pronated, and it's going to be medially rotated. That is a key finding of Herb Duchesne palsy, also known as the waiter's tip and it affects the C5 and the C6 root. Now, what other nerve affects the C5 and the C6 root? The answer here is going to be the axillary nerve. The axillary nerve is C5 to C6, and it affects the deltoid muscle, which is a big AB ductor. And if that's damaged, you'll have a flattened deltoid. See, that's a key finding here because it's involving the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. Now, the other key finding you want to remember is that another nerve that passes through the upper trunk of the brachial plexus but a little bit downwards towards the branches is the musculocutaneous nerve. So that's also C5 and C6. And it's important to know that because knowing that will help you shape the differential as you're answering questions on the board exam. The other key point to make here is that C5 on a dermatoma level of the upper limb includes the shoulder region which also has a little bit of C4 right near the deltoid and C6 is right after the elbow and it passes through innervating the thumb and the first index finger. So that's another way to look at the dermatomal distribution which can also help you narrow down the differential on the board exam. Now, while we're talking about the shoulder muscles here, let's review some of the rotator cuff muscles. You have the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis. The supraspinatus helps the deltoid abduct the arm, and that's the key point here. A lot of muscles are interrelated when you're talking about Herb's palsy. We talked about C5, C6, um, we talked about the dermatomal distribution, the axillary nerve involvement, we talked about the index finger and the thumb being involved with C5, C6. Now with the rotator cuff muscle, supraspinatus muscle helps the deltoid abduct the arm. Infraspinatus laterally rotates and teres minor adducts and laterally rotates the arm. So the subscapularis medially rotates and adducts the arm. So these are the key rotator cuff muscles also remembered by the mnemonic SITS for supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. The key point I want to make here is that remembering the muscles and their movement is important. You have abduction, lateral rotation with adduction and medial rotation with adduction. Another important point to understand in the anatomy of the upper limb is going to be Klumke's palsy and also thoracic outlet syndrome. Unlike Herb Duchesne's palsy, this affects the lower roots of the brachial plexus from C8 to T1, you want to keep in mind that the nerves that are innervating C8 to T1 are several. It could be the ulnar nerve, which has a sensory deficit if it's damaged in the medial um, area of the hypothenar eminence. And also, um, you'll have radial deviation of the wrist upon wrist flexion. The ulnar claw hand is um, a sign 
that patients commonly show when they're asked to straighten the fingers, called the Pope's Blessing. And the key thing to understand about the ulnar nerve is that it can commonly be injured in the medial epicondyle of the humerus and a fracture of the hook of the hamate, which is when patients fall on an outstretched hand, can lead to an ulnar nerve damage. The motor deficits will occur mainly when patients have adduction of the thumb, um, extension of the fourth and fifth fingers, and wrist flexion along with medial finger flexion. What happens with Klumke's palsy is that there is a childbirth defect in the inferior trunk of the brachial plexus and also a cervical rib can compress the subclavian artery and the inferior trunk resulting in the thoracic outlet syndrome. Now, What exactly is the thoracic outlet syndrome? Well this is a condition where you have atrophy of the thenar and hypothenar eminence, atrophy of the interosseous muscles, you have deficits on the medial side of the forearm and hand, and disappearance of the radial pulse upon moving the head toward the opposite side. Those are key findings if you see on the stem of the question you should immediately recognize for knowing that this is considered to be ulnar nerve paralysis and it's common in thoracic outlet syndrome. Keep in mind also that when patients present with C5, C8 to T1 deficits, on the lower trunk of the brachial plexus you have the several nerves passing. You also have um, the intrinsic muscles of the hand which are near the branches and you have the total claw hand which is um, located near the trunk region. The other important point to understand is that the median nerve also innervates portions of the C8 to T1 region and the radial nerve innervates portions of the C8 region. Now with the radial nerve injury you'll have a wrist drop and with the median nerve injury you have an ape hand and an ulnar deviation of the wrist upon flexion. So the motor deficits for median nerves are usually with a fracture of the supracondylar humerus or carpal tunnel syndrome or a dislocated lunate. The scaphoid was with the ulnar nerve and the lunate is with the median nerve. With the radial nerve injury you have fracture of the mid shaft of the humerus, Saturday night palsy, which is another name for compression of the axilla by the back of the crutches. Now, you have several nerve involvements here in Klumpke's and thoracic outlet syndrome. Median nerve also has other signs in the hand that can clue you in, just as we talked about the characteristic finding of the Pope's blessing in the ulnar claw. With the medial claw you have characteristic sign of claw hand of the second and third digits. Okay, And what you also have with Klump's palsy is the total claw hand where you know the lesion affects basically loss of function of the lumbricals, the forearm finger flexors, and the extensors. So you kind of have this clawing of the digits. With median nerve polaralysis, you have the median claw. And in the median claw, the second and third digits are clawed. Patients who have proximal median nerve lesions can have loss of the opponent's polysis muscle and have an unopposable thumb, which basically does not abduct and hence you can develop ape's hand. So there's two main lesions, ape's hand and median claw, both relating to a damage of the median nerve. The ulnar nerve will give an ulnar claw and clumps palki gives a clumps total claw. Patients who present with damage to the radial nerve we mentioned have a wrist drop which affects brachioradialis, extensors of the wrist and fingers, supinator and triceps. That was a board review for the Comlex board exam. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures and good luck in your preparation.